but of course it will make sense to you. One of the reasons cosmic horror is so awful to us is we do not have the senses to properly perceive these things. And so our brain is struggling to try and make sense of what little bleeds through. So I figure if we take this blackboard, break it into sure pieces. We can storm the university and take no prisoners. Who's with me? Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And welcome to this, a brand new day. Yes, indeed, I had therapy yesterday. And there are some things that I do want to stress. When I accidentally use very defeatist language these days, it is an accident. I spoke yesterday about how I don't think my meds are going to work. I'm trying to be positive about this. I spent most of my days as a very cynical, sarcastic, negative person. From, well, the year two, no, not even that. The year 2010 onward, I have been attempting to change that. So I'm still going to use negative defeatist language periodically. I even talked about that with my therapist because he mentioned something and it was like, I know, I understand. And then I said, I do stress to people, you need to watch your language that you use because you hear everything that you say, even if you're not directing your words at yourself. So if you say something is just not gonna work, you're hearing and internalizing that. So being careful with language is important. And of course, front-loading of videos. Hey, if you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, very awesome. If you could leave me a comment, extremely cool. And I do want to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people are literally beautiful and literally awesome. Without them, I would be hosed like a literal, a literal Christmas monkey. And I don't like that idea. I don't want to be hosed like a Christmas monkey. That would be bad. So thank you to each and every one of these people. It is greatly appreciated. I have no ideas how long I should be keeping my hands in the air anymore. So hopefully I haven't kept them up too long or taken them down too quickly. Yay. One of the things that I did have happen because the med is not working the way that I would like. Yesterday during therapy, I had happen all through my vlogging. I have talked about how it's felt like occasionally when I'm thinking someone will reach into my head and just pull the thoughts out. Just uh, 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 and then it's gone. Even as I'm thinking it. That happened while I was in therapy. So yeah, the meds are, they're helping me in some ways and I'm going to be positive. It may just take time. So here's hoping. But you do have to try and police your language that way because you do listen to absolutely everything that you say to yourself. So please, you gotta be careful. Past that, I have just been surviving. I've been trying to do my very best at watching videos, at playing games, at being active, at doing stuff so that I'm not just sitting. There's a lot of sitting still unfortunately, and I'm doing my best. And now my kitty cat's over here in the corner, so don't stare at her, she's trying to do her business. But, this is, this is how it's going now. So I tried to do stuff yesterday, and I did some things, not really anything creative. Oh, it's driving me nuts. I've been wanting to get back and do, Amelia, please stop making noise. There's a plastic thing that her cat box sits on, so she'll do her business in the cat box, get out of the cat box, and then start scraping at the plastic where there's absolutely nothing there. And it's loud and it's annoying. <sighs> so I do have, still have D100 Dungeon. I've been wanting to play it. The lack of the ADHD med to give me focus and the way just things are falling the way they are in my life. I haven't had any time to get back into it. And it drives me nuts. Part of that is just the simple ADHD. I am time blind again. And when I want to do something, three hours of free time, it goes like that. And it's gone. And then I didn't get a chance to do D100 Dungeon. So, here's hoping things will change. My therapist is talking to others and trying to help. Because he has talked to social workers now and says, if you just info dump him, give him a bunch of phone numbers that he needs to call to try and get stuff done, it is just going to overload him, overstress. He's going to freak out, not be able to get any of it done, and then nothing will happen. 
we need a more proactive type of help for him. So here's hoping. <sighs> life is life. It's not the end of the world. But of course, I've got something else on my list that's kind of grim and depressing. <clears throat> my wife died in 2014. March 2014. I am almost 60 years old. Recently, a science fiction writer, science fiction horror writer, well, semi-recently within the past couple months, he's approximately my age. His wife just recently per perished. I've been reading up on the stats because he's talked about them, and then I did a Google search on them this morning. It's like he was talking about how widowers' chances of survival are like 30% in a few months, and it only slowly levels off as time goes by. And I went and looked all this stuff up, and yeah, it's true. And even right now, I am not out of the woods. My wife died in 2014. The average lifespan of a widower is nine and a half years after the death of a spouse. I'm not out of the woods yet. I've got to make it to March 2014. And with the health issues that I have, I'm actually not sure I'm going to make that. I'm hoping. But if that's skin cancer on my back, or I got kidney cancer, or any other type of thing going on, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'd like to live forever. Forever. <laughs> but I don't want to die anytime soon. So, we shall see what happens. I'm doing my best to stay alive, so we'll see. But I do want to talk about some creative stuff as well with the whole razor's edge and inside to outside and anything else I happen to think of because I'm doing my damnedest to stay creative and work on my project. One thing that I have been working on while I was on walkies last night is trying to revisit and then reevaluate what those situations would be in now that I know more about what's happening on the razor's edge with the kaiju in its latest rampage. I've talked before how there is a place called Ash Pines Bluff. And what they do is they have these type of tree that as it ages, as it dies, it doesn't just have like dying leaves. The dying part of the leaves actually physically turn to ash and fall off. So as this plant dies, it turns to ash, the ash pines. And they've made a relative living out of it by harvesting these things and making like kits where you can make an abstract time art because these little kits come with materials little liquids you inject these liquids at random places into the block of wood and this slows down the process of it decaying and thus burning and so you have the ash slowly burning away and forming odd and bizarre abstract shapes that they themselves slowly burn away until the entire block turns into ash. Cheap things might take a week before it burns away. Very expensive status symbol blocks might take years or decades to finish burning. But before the rampage, they're having a serious issue this stuff is burning up fast, and even the living trees are burning. And in fact, in the last months and weeks before the rampage, they're absolutely positive that they're, this is the last year of the ash pines. Even the living trees are burning. Seeds are burning. Living seeds as they fall from the trees are burning to ash as they fall. Saplings have not been able to grow. They're really worried this might be the last year that there's ever an ash pine again. Luckily for the species and the people, by the time of the rampage, there are enough of them left that they're going to be able to bring the species back. But, like, like that's rough. That sucks. And, uh, and, of course, talking more about the rampage and the explosions and such, the gas mains underneath Apple Rock that explode and cause so much damage, this was a basic surgical strike, remember, by the Kaiju. 125 years prior to the rampage, there is the Bandicleer family. And sometimes the Kaiju does 
uh, focus on individuals because these people had capital and power and influence. Uh, it's awarded to them, like the community. It's very socialistic on the inside. I'll get back into that on another day. But they have a lot of power, a lot of influence, and on another layer, just so happened that there was a fungal thing that it can infect you and make your mind very manipulable. And a passing traveler who does picking passes through there gets infected themselves. The stuff that they have is covered in spores. They make it to Apple Rock and they go to the Banneclear family where the very, very most influential members, the oldest and most vulnerable are present and they get infected and become very strange, paranoid and insular. And as the rest of the family gets infected, they do the same and pull back and start just living inside of the house, the whole clan of them they're still rich they start putting things into place because they're being influenced they do the obfuscation of the maps they put in things and they make sure that no one is going to ever be able to find it particular metals that will last 125 years and then of course they finish going mad but then the foundation that they have closes off their mansion and maintains the grounds and maintains all of the contracts. So this gas lines that were put in 125 years ago by this insane family that is manipulated by the kaiju, they are bombs under the city. Because just before the rampage, every single important thing involving the city has been slowly changed so it's going temporarily through the one building that is directly above the largest bomb 100 feet below the surface of the city. Everything that is important to make the city run is running through that building on that one night. It's been a slow process and this was only supposed to be like a two or three day thing and then they were going to start changing stuff so that it wouldn't. Well everything was running through there. And then when that one light goes off, down underneath in this room that's filled with explosive natural gas, boom. Surgical strike. It doesn't matter. I need to determine how it's done because powerful as it is, it doesn't take out the city. Because these bombs, natural gas storage chambers, there's about four of them, each of them far larger than they needed to be directly underneath the building where the booster is and every single other gas main also goes through underneath tangles and spreads out. They're all connected with enough power to granulate but buried in such a way <clears throat> that the large portion of the force is absorbed and focuses the blast upward and slightly outward that way. So instead of leveling the city it just takes out the small areas and all that stuff because if you're the kaiju and you want to eat everyone it is so much easier to focus people get them running and herd them so that you can just eat them than it is to go picking through rubble and trying to find the intact corpses it was a surgical strike designed to destroy the city's ability to function in any fashion so yeah it's bad it was really bad and all of it of course the kaiju it's a horrible horrible thing and then really really quick i've said this before i'm going to say it again there is one thing i've only seen it as a as a panel in a comic book it was like a character whose body had been made out of like, I can't remember exactly because it's been a while and I've never been able to find the panel again, but their body is made up of like stacked doll heads with a doll head for a body and their arms are like stacked doll heads in a row. And then instead of hands, it was like chainsaws. And the phrase was that they were saying is, it all makes sense now. And the thing is, of course, yeah. And I think this must have been a Junji Ito thing because this man knows horror. But yeah, it does all make sense on a cosmic horror sense. If you are changed enough, you can comprehend this stuff, but then you're not human anymore. But of course it will make sense to you. 
One of the reasons cosmic horror is so awful to us is we do not have the senses to properly perceive these things. And so our brain is struggling to try and make sense of what little bleeds through that does not work in our world. And then what little does bleed through, we do not have the brain structures of our senses to interpret this data. And of course, we don't have the brain structures to contextualize it into our normal stuff. So you're trying to figure it out, you're gonna break your brain. But if you take that long, slow walk on a path of power where you reach that end, yeah, it does all make sense. You have the senses to properly perceive everything. You have the senses to interpret that data. You have the, the brain structures to contextualize that. You're not human anymore, but you understand it. It makes sense. Of course it makes sense. It all makes sense now. You don't make sense anymore to people. You're a cosmic horror, essentially. But yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? And have opened up 24 hours where the comments of my community tab. Gonna go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count in American Sign Language with my brain damage <laughs> from my alcoholism, my ADHD, my where, where I am on the autism spectrum, and a whole bunch of other things. I can barely function as a human being, but I'm gonna do my best because we have Jesse Koskinen. I hope so too. Thank you very, very much, and it's good to see you. David RGD, thumbs up and thank you. And then we have Oblivion with a three instead of an E, greatly appreciated. J-A-double-Y, uh, I'm hoping that the meds will work, giving it more a couple days to accumulate. Confused Owl 29 well, good to see you, and hopefully it will. Ann Kennedy, I do not blame you. And then Loco Drew 7, thumbs up and thank you. Zen, greatly appreciated. And yeah, The Walking Dead is, oh my God. And Ben B, greatly appreciated. Thumbs up and thank you. And Florum U, it is always good to see you in the comments. I sincerely hope you enjoy that stuff about the department. I'm still working on it. It's still part of the whole cryptid setting, which is still the whole inside outside setting. Ice Damon, greatly appreciated, and that is it. 11 people who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Greatly appreciated, each and every one of you. You get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. Definitely a thumbs up on that. And hey, with my hands in the air, if you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. And if you could, I've forgotten how this normally goes. If you could toss me a like, and if you could hit the nose, that's it. And it, well, then I've got the the whole Amazon wish list thing, and I've got my Twitter, my Facebook, my Patreon. And again, I don't know where my brain is. I love having ADHD that's just basically untreated. But the each of these beautiful and awesome people is literally beautiful and awesome. Thank you so much, each and every one of you. Literally, without the help of these people, I would be hosed. And I don't want to be hosed. I don't want to be hosed, especially like a Christmas monkey. And again, I have no idea as how long I should keep my hands in the air. So hopefully I've got it halfway properly. Yay. So now that I messed up that ending entirely, as well as, well, yeah, if you don't want to become a patron, there's the whole PayPal thing. And I do have an Amazon wishlist link with stuff like cat food on it. So if you could check that out, that'd be very cool. What a mess. My brain is not functioning. I don't know how well these men are going to help me. They're going to bring my blood pressure down a tiny bit. They're doing that. So in that fashion, it helps. Uh, hopefully, I hopefully, hopefully you can get done the things that you would like to get done. Remember, you hear everything you say. Do not say things like I should or I'm bad or I, I can't do. You hear everything you say. You internalize the things that you hear that you say. Try and change that language so it's slightly more positive. It does help. And hey, the CDC in the USA has said that, you know, the pandemic is over, even as thousands of people are still dying every day. Even as you can go online and find YouTubers who, who have said, well, after two years, I finally got it. And oh my God, I wish I feel like I'm dying. Please be smart. Don't let the experts who aren't going to suffer if you catch it and die, tell you that it's over. I'm wearing my mask. I am not gonna be inhaling somebody else's infected lung butter. No. 
So, <laughs> until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. Quite frankly, I do think that that is, in fact, a very good idea.